everybody and welcome back to another video and in this one we're going to have a look at kit bashing up some world eaters from your primaris marines now yes i know that is heresy but yes we are going to create some primaris world eaters i know i know you can all let the rage out now it's fine it's fine i'm doing it anyway there's nothing you can do to stop me, it's already happened. Now the inspiration for these comes more from my mischievous side than anything else. I basically wanted to do something that I shouldn't do because I am a human and that's what we like to do. So I have done something heretical and I have created good bad guys. I also wanted to self-inspire myself by giving myself a little bit of a dose of something new into 30k since I've been doing it so much for so long. He'd grown a little bit old so I wanted to introduce something new into the mix to see if that would kickstart my heresy vibe again. So I decided to take something new and add something old to it to make something awesome. And we've got Kit Bash World Eaters here. So to start with, we need to clean the desk and make a little bit of room for this project because, yeah, we're going to lose parts otherwise, so we need a little bit of a desk or organization. And we're going to use Indomitus. I'm sure most of you have got this box set somewhere. And I went rifling through to find out what I could use to create a 30k world eater group, squad, whatever you will. And I decided to land on the Assault Intercessor squad. This one seemed the most appropriate. The logic being, if I could chop off the chain swords to make them chain axes, that would be the simplest, easiest conversion, and yeah, I wouldn't need to do much more than that. However, I didn't want to stop there. That was just the beginning part for conversion ideas for this squad of mischievance. Mischievance, that's not even a word, but I've created it. New word for the day, everyone, mischievance. So we're going to start off by removing any kind of imperial iconography. And the predominant part of this is the eagle aquila on the chest. This is the skull aquila variant, but you get the same idea and we're going to use an exacto knife or scalpel blade to basically scrape down the eagle aquila and then also use some sandpaper to smooth it out so that we've got a basic plain breastplate if it's got a skull in the middle i tried to preserve that because i thought a skull is you'd see that in 30k but if not it was going to be a smooth front plate so i've decided to do five and I then went about clipping off all the parts from the sprue so I could assemble what I had to play with and take stock so I could make a bit of a battle plan. Then I also realised I started sanding down the mould lines, cleaning everything up and I started on the chainsaws and realised I'm getting rid of the chainsaws. Then I started sanding down the heads and I realised I'm not going to be using the heads either. Then I went to Forge World, I got loads of bits. My OCD wouldn't let me carry on unless I organised these into different sections. So we've done heads, weapons and arms. The shoulder pants had already been organised into their own pile and this was the first point where I was going to have to do some major conversion work because the Indomitus arms come with the shoulder pad already pre-moulded on and I really didn't want those shoulder pads. I was umming and ironing about it for a while and it made more sense to get rid of them. So I went to work hacking away the shoulder pad. Now to do this I'm using some snips uh, but if you have a better way of doing this please go ahead. I just found the best way of doing it was sort of hacking away until I've got a relative stub that I can put a shoulder pad on left. I'll attach it all with super glue but I'm going to use a exacto knife just to file down to make sure the new shoulder pad is a bit of a snug fit and fits pretty tightly. Now, as I said, we're going to use super glue here and we're going to use activator just so we get that quick bond. And then, if needs be, we can always fill it in with millipart or green stuff just to keep, keep it all together. Now we're doing a bit of a test fit just to see if this arm does really want to sort of go into place. And it's looking good so far. Uh, we'll see how things go when the rest of the parts get put together. Now one of the main conversions with Worldy is the swapping out chain swords for chain axes. The 
chain axes are the iconic weapon of the world eaters, so it makes sense to get rid of the chainsaws and get these chain axes on instead. And this is simply done by cutting down with an X-Acto knife or scalpel blade and snipping off the chainsaw with a bit of a sawing motion. That comes off easily enough. Then we do the same with the chain axe and then super glue it on with super glue. You could, if you want to, try and pin this, but because it's so small, you'll have to be very delicate, and I think this is not really worth the effort. You might as well just super glue it. If it snaps off, it's easily repairable. Now here's a technique I use for gluing small parts. I get some either sprue or blister pack, and I put a blob of super glue on it. This is now my dipping blob. Dipping blob? That's the saying. And all I do is dunk the part that I want to glue into the super glue and then I spray the other part with activator so that I can get a nice quick bond and I don't have to sit there for a while waiting for this to dry. Now, one thing, you may have spotted it or may have not spotted it, my hand is relatively close to that puddle of super glue. And if you are going to do this, make sure you don't rest your hand in the super glue. It did happen a couple of times. But now we have our chain axe on our Primaris arm. So we have one arm and one shoulder pad done. We're now going to move on to another weapon. This is for the Morning Star of the World Eaters. Now this is from the Rampager kit from Forge World. And what I wanted was one of the guys at least to have, be swinging a ball and chain effectively. And to do this I started off by cutting off this wrist module. Uh, I don't exactly know what it's called but we want to keep that bit but we want to get rid of the arm segment because the arms don't quite match up and trying to cut the plastic arms and then slot this in instead it's not really going to work so what we're going to do is we're going to cut the top off and then we're going to use a scalpel or an exacto knife to just lightly carve out the inner part of it and then we'll test fit it and once we're happy with it we'll attach it to the arm the power source can fit into the heel of the hand where the handle will go moving on to the next weapon we're then going to cut off the hand off another one and we're going to add the hand and kukra blade of the other rampager squad now i could have cut just the blade and it stuck that on but i do like the kind of knuckle duster guard that you get on a kukra blade now for the absolute bane of all of my conversions is a double-handed conversion or a double-handed weapon conversion. These are the most challenging things. I've always had problems with these. They, you're just going to have to kind of wing it and... Yeah, it's a lot of fiddling about. But all we're going to do is take the arms and cut off the hands because this double-handed axe already has hands attached to it. So we're just going to use those. What we need to do, though, is make sure they fit. Now, this is one of the trickiest parts because it's a lot of sticking arms on, putting them in place, seeing if they fit. If they don't, move something, carve something more off, adjust something a little bit more. And this can go on for hours, to be honest with you. One thing I did find with this is the stubs on the arms of the intercessors were actually becoming a pain in the butt now. They were getting in the way. So I decided to cut them off and this gave me a little bit more flexibility. Now I'm going to try and pin the hands. So what we're going to do is put a little bit of gardening wire into the hand or into the arm and then this will give us something to at least latch onto so that we can adjust it accordingly. As you can see, I'm making a fair bit of mess, but what we want to do is we'll get it glued in, then we trim the wire down, and then we can slot the hand in. Now, this isn't a permanent slot, so don't glue this right now, because you want to find out where the other one's supposed to go. So you'll need to move it, and you'll probably need to keep on moving it until you're happy with it. Again, we're going to pin the other arm, and we use an exacto to get the point where we want to drill, and then we drill the hole for the arm as well. I got so frustrated with trying to convert this, I decided to pin the arm as well in one of the slots. So at least I had some maneuverability, at least to uh, be able to try and get this to work. Long story short, what I ended up doing is I ended up gluing the bottom hand to the arm and then just adjust with the top one. You, as I said, 
this took me hours because I was just fiddling it about and I had to keep on bending wires, moving things, moving arms, trying to get it to work and it was just not really working. So long story short, commit with one arm and then adjust the other to fit. It's the easiest way and lesson to be learned from this story. Okay, luckily the shoulder pads do cover up a lot of the mess that we may, may have made on the arms and if they're not sitting completely flush, the shoulder pad will do a lot of the covering up for that. Now, we've got some pretty unsightly gaps between the wrists and the arms here. Since this is a world eater, we can use something to cover it up, but for the moment we're going to pick the head that we want to put in place. And as much as I liked them all, I really did like the big horn corn eight style helmet and i thought this looked really i think it's throwback to the old hero quest days is what i liked with that now we're going to use some 0.5 i think this might even be 0.3 chain this is jewelry chain this is how we're going to cover up those unsightly gains what we're going to do is we're going to dunk our chain in our pool of super glue and then just tack that onto the arm using some activator and then we're going to wrap it around the wrist and we can wrap it around the area where there's a nasty gap this will basically hide that gap with chain and solves us having to do any green stuff because world eaters have the iconic chains strapped to their weapons we're going to use that to advantage and cover up the gaps that we've got with this and all we do is we wrap the chain around the wrist till we're happy We then glue on the backpacks and we can say this one's pretty much done. File down any other sort of chest plate bits, attach arms, heads to all the other guys. It's up to you what heads you want to choose from this, but the 30k heads are so distinctive. This is really where we're going to get our 30k vibe from. And there we go. Now, the posing could be different, but this is a sort of singular pose kit from the Indomitus set, so we're working with what we've got. However, I really do like the aesthetic of these, and in an upcoming video, you should see me how I painted them. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please hit the like, subscribe, and share around if anyone you know might be interested in this. If anyone else you know has a little bit of a heretical heart and they want to see some 30k primaris then please go ahead and share away in future videos you should see how i paint these up and there may be a little bit of a collaboration with one of the guys from the chilling network to see what how this all came about so until then hope you've enjoyed it and i shall see you next time bye bye